Um, so good evening, everyone. Uh, Khaled, that was such a beautiful presentation. Thank you. So uh, my name is Esra Sati. I'm Sudanese and I'm a grad student. Today, I'm going to be talking about something which is so not related to my work. Basically, I'm going to be talking about facial scars, its origin in Sudan of the Nile Valley. So before anything, I would like to just ask this quick question. Did anyone ever came across a community of Sudanese or been around Sudanese and seen that grandmother or maybe a grandfather who had those long scars across the cheeks? Most probably you have, especially if you actually live in the Middle East. So in Sudanese terms, we call those shuluk, which technically translates to scars in the face. So, so what is shuluk? As I mentioned, those are Sudanese terms for facial scars which are very much associated across um, different regions in Sudan. But for the book that I'm going to be talking about in the next slide, the author specifically focused on one specific region, which is called or known as the Middle Valley or the, West, the, the Central Valley of uh, Nile, which is Northern Sudan. So as much as everyone has the same question, as much as my own grandmother actually had those scars in her face, but I always had the question of why and what does, what, why they're done and what do they really represent? So the same question the author of this book actually had. So this book was published in the year 1976 by a researcher as well as a um, lecturer in the University of Khartoum who decided on uh, had the same question of trying to pinpoint in time and in history what are those shuluk are meant, meant for and where did the concept start it. So um, there are different ideas about it, wh whether they are meant for cosmetic reasons, religious reasons, and more. So, um, so the concept of facial scars is actually seen across the sub-Saharan country, so countries. So it's not a something that is unique to Sudan, but at the same time that it's known in Sudan itself that those scars that cover only the face are very much common among the Arab descent. Although there are a lot of history and knowledge that there was indigenous groups in Sudan even before the Arab came to Sudan that had those scars then done for them. So there are um, um, signs and documents that they were seen even before um, 70, 700 years before uh, BC. So, um, as I mentioned, the author of the book focuses only in this region specifically. So, as I mentioned, they have multiple functions and Shiluk as themselves, the function of it, actually changed across the history. So, at first, it used to be a characterization of those Arab tribes, which means that since the Arab moved from the Arabian Peninsula all the way to Sudan, and since dark skin was somehow associated with slaves and slavery, they decided that we need to somehow mark our own uh, second or third generation to make sure that those are descendants of Arab, which is something very common in the tribes from the Arabian Peninsula. So they decided to make different types of scars. Some of them are vertical, some of them are horizontal. And after that, with, with time, the function of those shuluk actually changed. So they became more of associated with religious belief. So in Sudan, um, you might or you might not know there is a lot. There are a lot of Sufi beliefs across the whole Sudan, and for people to be associated with a certain Sufi belief, they had those scars done on their faces. But with things and time changed, they became and they are mostly known to be purely cosmetic. It's so interesting that at one point of time there were ladies who were actually very much expert in the anatomy as well as the structure of the face that they know how to do those scars for every person and how to make those scars fit each face differently. So um, if you look at those three ladies over here, each one of them have a different way of scars presented in the faces. And as I mentioned, those scars are either vertical or horizontal across the cheeks. Sometimes there are a T pattern or an H pattern next to the eye. And even though all of them somehow look the same for non Sudanese people, each one of those ladies are known to be from a different tribe. So it was very much interesting to say that even Sudanese who seem to find other Sudanese, let's say uh, there was a lot of incidents of Sudanese being kidnapped or taken away from Sudan to work somewhere else because of the skin color, maybe because of the tradition. 
it was very much interesting to see that some Sudanese were managed to actually be brought back to Sudan just because the type and the and the way how the scars are looked like, um, that helped to actually send them back to the tribes or to the original regions. So um, as I mentioned, each of those ladies are from a completely different tribe. And until this current day, and I think my generation and my mom generation, we don't really see that yet. So it's basically from grandma generations, like 60 or 70 years ago. But there are still some regions in Sudan that does um, facial scars. And you can still see that in rural areas until this day. So what's next? Um, maybe a very much it will be interesting to do a comparison to other sub-Saharan tribes to see why the scars in North Sudan are different in other regions of Sudan, and maybe other regions in the sub-Saharan region as well, and how they are made, the procedure itself, because up to this day, it was quite hard to find a proper documentation or um, article or books that are presented in any other language but Arabic. So it will be interesting to bring this forward and create more curiosity related to this topic and make people more educated about it. And it's also interesting to say that there are other cosmetic procedures in Sudan, like lip tattooing, nose piercing, and other types of um, um, scars or cosmetic scars that people do to beautify themselves or make themselves join or be a part of a certain tribe or a certain community. And yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you very much for your time and for your effort. If you have any um, questions, maybe you can just DM me on my Instagram. It's the same as my Twitter account. And if you have any extra information that you would like to share, that would be even more amazing. So thank you very much. Thank you for the time and the effort. And I will just pass it back to Layla. Thank you, Layla. <laughs> Sidi Mansouri Abba, Sidi Mansouri Abba, Sidi Mansouri Abba, Sidi Mansouri Abba.